Uh, good afternoon, Tanishta. Uh, Tanishta, we are in the midst of a full-blown national housing crisis. It is a crisis which needs to be tackled with determination and a real sense of urgency. As you know, rents are soaring. Up to 130,000 applicants are on the social housing waiting lists. Housing supply is minimal. The rent caps in the rent supplement scheme are so out of line with market rents, they are little more than a fantasy. The central bank deposit rules have made it incredibly difficult for first-time buyers in major urban areas, and many people looking to trade up are effectively trapped by the 20% deposit rule. Mortgage interest relief is gone for home buyers. Banks are leaning on indebted landlords now who have good tenants and for forcing them uh, to push up rents towards market rents. Banks are now repossessing homes with increasing zeal. They don't even have to comply now with the Code of Conduct on Mortgage Arrears before proceeding with repossessing a home. And of course, the cruelest face of all in the housing crisis uh, is the scandal of homelessness, with people sleeping rough on our streets and 1,500 children uh, living in emergency accommodation in this country. And with each passing day, Tarnished, we are treated to another leak about what the government intends to do to tackle this crisis. Today's instalment is tax breaks for landlords if they accept tenants on rent supplement or the housing assistant payment. Well, Tarnished, the, that proposal will simply not work, primarily because it won't add a single new unit to housing stock. And secondly, if a landlord has the option of accepting rent of 1,400 a month in the private market or taking 800 euro per month under the rent supplement or the HAP scheme, they would want one hell of a tax break to choose the latter and to choose the rent supplement or the HAP. Now, every TD in this house is inundated day after day with housing-related issues. And the elephant in the room, Tanishta, is the lack of housing supply. And the consistent message that we are all getting from the construction sector is that it simply is not viable to build. Now, there are a number of steps that the government urgently need to take. First of all, you need to examine why it costs so much to build a home in Ireland today. You need to examine the state-controlled costs, uh, which are an important part of those input costs. Uh, for example, development levies, uh, the new Irish Water Connection and new homes, which I'm told is adding three to four thousand euro to the cost of a new home. You need to make finance available so that residential construction can get underway. Uh, in July, a 500 million euro fund was announced through the Strategic Investment Fund. It's not yet up and running. Uh, it is, will be towards the end of the year at the earliest before it does. And I'm told, Tanish, that, that the cost of borrowing from that fund will be in the region of 14 per cent, which is absolutely mad at a time when the state is borrowing at record low interest rates of between 1 and 2 per cent. And Tanishta, within your own department, you need to lift the rent caps and you need to do it immediately. You need to bring some sense of reality to the rent supplement caps uh, which are in that scheme uh, and in the HAP scheme and introduce a level of rent certainty. So this is a crisis in the here and now. And it's all very fine to talk about grandiose plans, about billions of euro for building thousands of houses. The reality is tonight, 1,500 children in Ireland will sleep in emergency accommodation. 130,000 families on the social housing list. It is a scandal. It is not acceptable, and it's not going to get any better without major intervention, Tanishta. Thank you. Because there is no building, there is no supply. The problem is only going to get worse. Now, what is the government going to do about it? Uh, well, I accept uh, that as a country, uh, notwithstanding the general economic recovery that's underway and that thankfully is getting stronger every day, uh, that we do have uh, a legacy issue in relation to housing arising, as uh, you well know, from the collapse in the building industry. But leave that aside, uh, just let me say firstly, uh, in relation to rent supplement, which I'm not really sure um, that people like yourself particularly understand. Uh, through rent supplement, uh, we provide housing and homes for 65,000 individuals and families. So it's actually one of the largest suppliers of rental accommodation in this country. And secondly, what we do and have been doing for some time, Deputy, is uh, we negotiate rents on an individual basis uh, with landlords. 
The 65,000 homes uh, constitute about 30% of the entire rental market in Ireland. And our concern is that because we are a major player uh, in the private rented market, uh, that if we simply follow the demands of some landlords, who I have to say, some landlords, and you've spoken yourself there about it, are excessively greedy. Let's not put a tooth in it. They're excessively greedy, and they're looking for more and more and more money every couple of months to a scale that is not particularly justified on economic grounds. We can understand they may be looking to recover losses that they may have lost in the crash, uh, but uh, what we are exploring at the moment as a government uh, is the provision of rent certainty, where like other European countries, where the rental model works quite well, rents uh, are uh, stable over a three-year or longer period in relation to the tenancy agreement. But coming back to rent supplement, and I just want to give you the figures to the end of September. We have actually negotiated uh, new uh, rental agreements which have generally involved significant increases uh, in the rents on a case-by-case -case basis, working with the family or the individual concerned. We've negotiated almost uh, 2,700 through the new improved community welfare service that the Department of Social Protection offers since we took that service over uh, from the HSA a couple of years ago. And secondly, you'll know that we work on a, a protocol with Threshold and with a number of other agencies, such as Simon, on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. And we have actually negotiated over 1,200, over 1,200 agreements uh, based on the, threat, uh, based on the uh, protocol. And that means that we have negotiated this year alone, this year alone, because remember of the 65,000 people in rental accommodation, and families, a lot of landlords don't regularly raise the rents, but there is a cohort who do and often ask tenants to leave houses, very often because a returning emigrant child is going to use uh, that family property, and that's fine and valid. So I just want you to be sure, because what I want to send out is a message, that if somebody is on rent supplement and we text over 40,000 of those customers on a monthly basis to say, and I want you as a deputy and the other deputies to hear this and pass the message on to people who may come to you in your clinic with a difficulty, that if they contact the community welfare service, we not only uh, can, but we will, as the statistics show, negotiate very successfully in relation to rent, uh, which should actually assist those families. Not only that, but the one-to-one -one contact is a way of reaching out as well for more uh, detailed assistance on a variety of other areas, such as, for instance, helping that individual or family into education, into training, and into employment. So it's actually a different kind of in-depth service, rather than simply, in, in June 2012, we raised rents across the board by an average of 12,000. And do you know what? Two months later, landlords were back looking, this is a couple of years ago, looking for another 10, 10 to 20, 10 to 20 percent. And what I want, well sorry, 65,000 people in rent supplement and getting good homes and getting good homes from landlords is not waffle. That shows the level of Sinn Féin cynicism about our country. It just shows your level of cynicism. It shows your level of... Your, you just deny 
Sinn Féin deny this country over and over again, and it shows an appalling level of cynicism that you would decry 65,000 families and individuals who are being assisted and have housing, and good housing at that for the most part, through the rent supplement. But I Thank just you. want to send out that message, Deputy, that we're doing it on an individual basis. That's in addition to the investment, as you know, of $3.8 billion into building homes, into acquiring homes, and into, uh, into fitting homes which have been closed up. And again, deputies will know that the practice of voids in uh, county councils around the country, particularly in Dublin, where it's been a huge problem, is being brought to an end. And those houses in their hundreds are being given out these year, this year to families who require housing, as well as the houses which are being built. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Michael McGrath for a supplementary question. Tanished, I think people really want to hear solutions to this crisis. And if the rent supplement... If I may, Deputy, please. If I may. Sorry. Could we order, please? Deputy Michael McGrath has the floor. Deputy Michael McGrath. I think people want to hear. Sorry, mem listen, members. Please stop the clock, uh, last year, Deputy, please. You can't hear. Sure, sorry. Please. Sorry. Could we sorry. Please. Will members settle down, please? Will you settle down? Well, well Deputy McGrath. Well, I've clearly touched the question. nerve anyway. I've clearly touched the nerve. Because this situation has got completely out of control. Sorry. Now let me tell you. No, let me tell you. the floor. Yeah, let me I tell you all a few home truths. Tarnished, if the rent supplement scene was so flexible and so accommodating, why are people becoming homeless? Why are people becoming homeless? Because Tarnished, we are all, we are all practicing politicians. We know what is happening on the ground. And that level of flexibility that Deputy. you talk about is simply not there. Deputy Stag, I know you don't, you don't like listening to the truth. You don't like listening Deputy. to the truth. Please, deputies. Sorry. De Sorry, Deputy Docker, please. No. Deputy McGrath has the floor now. Deputy McGrath. The truth of the matter is. Look at this. Leader's questions, Deputy Stag, please. Leader's questions. Yeah, Deputy, people want to hear solutions. They want us to debate rationally a huge crisis facing the country. Well, all we'll get from you is a rent, obviously. All we'll get from you is a rent. And it's pathetic. It's pathetic. When people are homeless, all you're doing is throwing mud across the floor, and it's absolutely pathetic. It's pathetic. And you sum up the arrogance. You sum up the arrogance of this government on this issue, and you won't even listen to, you won't even listen to the truth. You won't even listen to it. The reality is, please, the reality is, Tarnished, the reality is, in my own constituency, uh, a family with two children, the rent cap is €725. Euro. There isn't a house to be had. There isn't a house to be had for less than €1,200. Euro. Now, that gap is not being breached on a day-to-day -day basis by the Community Welfare Officer. You're talking about the Tenancy Protection Scheme, which is there in Dublin City and is there in Cork City. It's not happening on the ground, Tarnished, okay. and that is the truth. Right. Now, la lashing out at landlords is not going to solve the problem. Landlords will charge what they can. That's the reality, Tarnished. It always has been, and it always will be. Yes? Uh, please. No. Sorry, this is not a debate at all. No, Tarnished. No. question time. We, we, we support rent certainty. Uh, and Barry Cohen has produced a comprehensive document on the issue of rent cer certainty. And if you want to talk about the record, the reality is, back in 2009, there was £670 million given to local authorities for social housing investment. Last year, it was £88 million. 
That's the reality, Tanishta. There are still 4,000 local authority homes boarded up in this country. And I know my own area best. In Cork City and County, you have about 700 voids, 700 units boarded up. And in the great announcement from Minister Kelly in the summer, there will be enough funding to bring about 200 of those uh, to the market, Thank to you, people, to make them available. 200 out of 700. That is the absolute truth. You completely ignored in your response the whole area of supply which I dedicated a lot of my time to in putting forward points to you and questions to you, to you around the whole area of supply, to examine why the cost of building in Ireland is so high, to examine the funding model. The fact of the matter is the state's response has been abysmal. A €500 million Euro fund, which is a Mickey Mouse fund, it still isn't available, and it's at a cost of 14%, is what I'm being told, on it. When the state is borrowing up, at 1% to 2%. That simply will not work. It is making unviable projects even more unviable. Thank you. So let's give people some hope. Let's talk about solutions, what you can do now around the rent supplement scheme, what you can do around rent certainty, what you can do around increasing supply, because there are real bottlenecks there, and Tarnashta, it is only going from bad to worse, it's not going to get better, and leaking this, that and the other every day about what the government is thinking about doing and is going to do in the future is of no consequence and is absolutely uh, of no use Thank you. to people who are facing homelessness, to people who are homeless, Please, people Deputy. who are 10 years on Sorry. a local authority housing list. Sorry, so let's deal with solutions. Well, I think your uh, question uh, was long in analysis, but I don't think I heard a single suggestion from you. Uh, you talked about landlords, you said, can charge what they like. Now, Fianna Fáil, in its previous incarnation, set the tone for how landlords learned to behave in Ireland. And that was because Fianna Fáil decided somewhere around the year 2000, in conjunction with many local authority managements, that the solution to housing supply in Ireland lay to a very significant extent, almost entirely with the private sector. Now, I, I don't, sorry, sorry, the evidence, the evidence is all, sir, sorry. sir, the evidence, the evidence, the evidence, the evidence is all there. And you just said, you just said that landlords can, tr can charge what they like. Does being a fool agree with that? Sir, that is what you said. That's what you said. That's what you said. You said landlords can charge what they like. I would suggest, I would suggest that Fianna Fáil should send a message to landlords who think they can charge what they like, regardless of people at work who are ranting. Sorry, sorry. We've, we've, we've learned a lot about markets since uh, people like you, who cheerleaded the banks, had the banks collapse and went to the construction industry. What, what's happening at the moment? What's happening at the moment is the government is allocating, out of a recovering economy, a very significant amount of capital funding to do a whole series of things. Firstly, to reopen the voided up properties. Secondly, to build new houses, and there are announcements and allocations both to your own local authority and to local authorities right around the country. Thirdly, to get uh, approved housing bodies to actually build houses. And fourthly, to buy for local authorities, for local authorities to buy houses uh, on the private housing market to house people. So it's a four-part solution. In relation to your specific uh, question about the Strategic Investment Fund, yes, a half a billion has been allocated to housing in relation to that. Now, uh, I can't give you a response now to the exact rate of uh, return that's required by the Strategic Investment Fund. I'll get that information for you, Deputy, because those deals haven't commenced. That information hasn't been available to me or generally available in the public domain. Uh, and what I also want to say to you, Deputy Doe, I welcome Fianna Fáil's conversion to the notion of uh, rent certainty because I think in terms of making progress on policy in Ireland, 
getting an agreement from all of the parties in this House that we would opt for a model based on our experience, and a lot of us have uh, travelled or lived in countries like France and Germany where uh, there are models, in Austria, a small country like us, where there are models of uh, uh, rent certainty available. Thank and you, I actually welcome Fianna Fáil's commitment to put manners on landlords who think they can charge what they like. Thank you.